Over the past century, the world has witnessed a number of heartless acts of terror, which will be burned into the minds of those affected for the rest of their lives. Some people lost family members, others lost friends, but thousands merely witnessed shocking acts of mass murder. In effect, taking the lives of countless innocent people, all for a religious or political message to the world. Among the many attacks was the 1995 Oklahoma City bombings, the 2005 London bombings, and of course the 2001 World Trade Center attacks. As a result of these events, many thousands of people were killed, thousands more were injured, and millions of people in hundreds of countries were emotionally and psychologically destroyed by seeing or hearing about these events, which spread quickly throughout the world. Recently, we witnessed yet another devastating attack, which again shook the world and everyone who lost a loved one or a close friend. On the 22nd of July 2011, two sequential attacks were carried out against the population of Norway. The first was located in the city of Oslo and came in the form of a car bomb explosion which was detonated outside the office of Prime Minister Jen Stoltenberg. He was not injured in the blast, although it is believed that he was the target of the attack. Eight people lost their lives in that explosion, along with more than 10 people being critically injured. However, this was but a prelude to what the world would see next. The explosion in Oslo was believed to be a distraction for the second attack, which occurred less than two hours later at a youth camp on the island of Vitoya. A gunman, disguised as a policeman, allegedly called for some of the youths to crowd around and listen to him as he informed them about the recent bomb blast only kilometres away, when he suddenly opened fire and began mercilessly killing innocent teenagers and staff. Naturally, everybody immediately fled the scene and either tried to hide in nearby buildings or attempted to swim away from the gunfire. Many of the people were shot whilst pretending to be dead or killed while they made an escape by swimming away from the island. On that day, a man had ruthlessly shot and killed 69 innocent people on the island, plus the eight who were killed in the Oslo explosion. It took almost two hours for the Norwegian Special Task Force Police to arrive and arrest the shooter. Anders Bering Brevik. Brevik was a normal child, but began to express mature views on politics at the early age of 12. He criticised his parents for supporting the policies of the Norwegian Labour Party and his mother in particular for being a modern feminist. He wrote about his upbringing. I do not approve of the super liberal matriarchal upbringing as it completely lacked discipline and has contributed to feminizing me to a certain degree. It is believed that one of Breverick's closest teenage friends was a Muslim who brought him into his gang with other Pakistani friends. The gang would repeatedly beat and tease Breverick and eventually it became too much for him so he broke away to focus on his studies. Former classmates of Breivik say that he was an intelligent student who stood up for the victims of bullying. As he grew older, however, he became more rebellious. He began to graffiti on public property, and he has stated that he and a gang of friends accumulated more than $700,000 in property damage. Former work colleagues state that he worked with people from many different countries and was a kind person and an exceptional colleague although he did get easily irritated by those of Middle Eastern or Asian origin. In May 2009, Brevik founded a company called Brevik Geofarm, which he allegedly used as a cover so that he could legally purchase large amounts of artificial fertilizer and other chemicals, the only ingredients he needed to make his own explosives. Brevik then began to purchase weapons in the most legal ways he could think of. He decided to purchase his weapons in Norway, noting that he had a clean criminal record and a hunting license, so he was sure he wouldn't raise any suspicion. He attended at least 15 training sessions at the Oslo Pistol Club and by January 2011, his applications to buy weapons was approved. 
he spent just under $3,000 and purchased a Glock pistol and a Ruger Mini 14 semi-automatic carbine assault rifle in addition to a Benelli Nova pump-action shotgun that he had admitted to legally owning for several years. He also admitted that he was going to use hollow point bullets ejected with 99% nicotine that will make them even more deadly on his victims. Brevik's weapon training consisted of visiting various firing ranges throughout Norway. However, he also admitted that he made use of the video game Call of Duty Modern Warfare sharpen his accuracy skills and prove to himself he could focus with a weapon whilst under pressure. Six hours before the attacks on the 18th of July, Brevik released his 1500 page manifesto on the internet titled 2083, a European Declaration of Independence, in which he outlined his plans, procedures and all of the work he had done three years prior to this fateful day. By the time authorities had discovered the document, he already parked his rented Volkswagen Crafter van rigged with homemade explosives and was on his way to the island of Itoya to mercilessly murder innocent teenagers. Although Brevik was put behind bars for life, the events of this day have highlighted the fact that terrorism doesn't necessarily come from violence. It could also come from a person that you see in your very own suburb. It is in fact very much still active and must be stopped before any more lives can be mercilessly taken in order to promote the simple political message and the beliefs of one individual. The main question the world is wondering, where will it be next?